What's going on? It is your man, Corey. Welcome to another episode of Counter Corey. And this is pretty much a show where I just want to give my opinion on a couple of topics in music that have been going on this week. Get your opinion on them. Maybe we can talk about it. Maybe we can debate about it. And this is something different than the educational content that we normally provide here on the brand man so i thought it would be pretty cool but if you're here for that you still want to check that stuff out i put links to the digital dash in the description below as well now other than that come and follow me on instagram or twitter at cory the savior like i said i want to hear what you guys got to think on some of these topics or you can always leave those in the comments below as well. I'll make sure to check those out. Now, with that being said, let's get right into these topics for today. Now, first thing I do want to start with, just because it's a little bit more lighthearted than some of the topics we've had this past couple of weeks, but Jay-Z has finally put his music out on Spotify and other streaming services. Um, it pretty much was like a birthday gift to himself for his 50th birthday. And if you're wondering why is this so significant, like why do we care that Jay-Z's music is on Spotify? It's Jay-Z, right? He probably didn't need it. But this is the last brick to fall from that streaming war. I don't know if you remember, I think it was like 2013, 2014 when those streaming world wars first started and everyone was trying to hold exclusive music to their platform. It was around the same time that like, you know, Chance did the Apple only exclusive for coloring book and Kanye did the same thing with My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Jay-Z took the ultimate step and was like, yo, my music is only going to be on a platform that I own, I control, title, right? So for the last, what, four or five years, you can only listen to Jay-Z music if you had a Tidal subscription, which Tidal is cool, but Tidal is not the competing streaming service. Like, I'm a Spotify guy myself, but... So, he was pretty much hurting Jay-Z fans, and I know, man, like, Jay-Z has money, right? So, I used to look at him and think, Jay-Z doesn't need my Spotify streams. He's Jay-Z, but I looked at his numbers the first day they just hit the services. He had 8 million listeners over, like, a 13-hour time span. So I'm thinking like, man, is it, <laughs> is it really Jay-Z gifting this to himself for his birthday? Well, it's, it's Jay-Z, so we know there's a bigger business reason behind it. Jay-Z doesn't just do things. I don't feel like he does. Um, I was like, okay, is he finally caving in on the streaming war? Has he finally realized that that doesn't exist anymore? Because Spotify and Apple have been moving for a minute like, all right, man, we don't care. We're just going to work with everybody and let everything be free, and that seems to be working for them. And then I thought, nah, man, Jay-Z's a businessman. He started calculating all the money he was missing from Apple Music and Spotify and how that probably would benefit his bottom line for title, man. Like, I always look at it like, bro, you're still an artist. It's still your music. Eight million monthly listeners in a 13-hour time span means that people have been wanting to hear you. Um, so, I don't know. Like I said, that's, pretty, that's, 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 that's like as lighthearted as it got this week. I thought it was pretty cool because I'm a Jay-Z fan. I went straight to reasonable doubt. I have this this theory, you can come debate me on it, that Jay-Z's Reasonable Doubt is probably top five artist debut album of, of all time. So I've been waiting to hear his joint for a minute. And like I said, I'm a Spotify guy, though. So kudos to Jay-Z, man, for finally putting it out. Kudos to Jay-Z for realizing, like, you got a bag, bro, but the, the, it's still some big bags out there for you. Now, moving on to other news. 6 9 man, your favorite, your favorite New York rapper um, is back in the news again. Not for something that he did per se, but for a very big decision that's going to impact him and impact everything around him, as if it hasn't already impacted everything, right? But what am I talking about, man? So Takashi's 6 9 prosecutors have written a statement pretty much asking the judge to reduce his sentence. Um, the statement, and I, I recommend you go read this, man. I'm checking this out via Pitchfork right now, but 6 9 when he got his sentencing, I think... He's what he's set to do about 40 to 40, 40 to 50 years, somewhere around there. So the judge is asking that the sentence be reduced off of the fact that they could not have gotten some of these guys and prosecuted some of these guys without the information that 6 9 gave to them. But they're not asking for a 47 to 20 year reduced. They're not asking for a 47 to 15. It's been estimated that 6 9 could get out as early as the top of next year, like first quarter. So that January to like March, April time frame. Which is crazy, right? Um, a 47-year sentence reduced to, what is that? That will make it, he was in there for a year and a half, a year and some change, maybe like a year and, yeah, like a year and a half. Uh, that, that is unheard of. That is, that is crazy. That, that, that kind of brings to light like the whole, we talk about rappers being snitches before because the sentence is getting reduced. That's always been a big thing in the rap community is like, I can tell he said something because you should be doing 30, 
but now you only did 10, you only did five. But 47 to a year and a half is like a new record. That is unheard of. I've never heard of anything like that. And to be honest with you, I think he's going to get it. I don't think it's going to get reduced to a year just because I'm looking at it, at it like the the New York judicial system is going to be like, okay, you know, he still was a rapper or he's still this entertainer that was pushing this. Yes, we we couldn't have gotten some of these people without him. Um, like I said, there were they talk about how there were big moves in the case that would not have been made had 6 9 been in the position that he was in, feeding the information that he was feeding. But there were members in it that were – the, the feds pretty much feel like they had enough information to get those people regardless. They just wanted to tighten up the case before they moved in. It's, it's like, you know, if you have a 98, it doesn't hurt to get it to 100. That's how they were taking it. So I don't think he'll get it knocked down to getting out top of next year. But I wouldn't be surprised if he got knocked down to like three to five years or somewhere in there. Just because if the information that he was pushing during the trial, you know, or what we've been saying, if all that is true, man, 6 9 has really been this planet informant from this whole time. Like, he he was this planet informant this whole time. That means that somewhere along the line, they worked out a plan to make it happen this way. Where it's like, look, man, we're going to plant you in this situation. You you go in, you get up, gather this information, you make it out alive. We will set it up so that you will have a reduced sentence. You will not do all the time that you do it. I a thousand percent believe that is going to happen. Next top of next year, I don't know, man. Like, like I said, if that happens, that's new to me. I'm going to be just as shocked as I know some of you are going to be. But I feel like at the very least, three to five years since, man. So um, this is crazy, man. I want to know what you think about this. Leave that in the comment section below. You think 6 9 is getting out at the top of next year? You think they're going to leave him in there for the full 47? Or do you think he's just going to get around what I think, like that three to five year, maybe 10 year sentence reduction? That's what I feel like is going to happen. Let me know in the comment section below. Now, moving on, I want to get into this WAC 100 versus TI beef. Um, WAC 100 and TI have been going at it on social media for like the whole week, the past week. Um, and if you aren't familiar, this has stemmed back from some comments that WAC made about, about a week or two weeks ago as of me making this video where he pretty much put out there that he doesn't feel like Nipsey Hussle is a legend. That is where the beef has stemmed from. Um, so if you're not familiar with his comments, TMZ had called him outside of, think, I think, a nightclub, and they just were asking him questions about something he had stated before about Nipsey Hussle. Wack doubled down on his comments by saying he wasn't. What's a legend? Define a legend. Let's keep it real. If Dr. Dre died right now, we say we lost a legend, right? Based upon what? Numbers, right? Body of work, right? How many albums did Nipsey drop? One album, right? This is no personal shit. This is real shit. So, Wack is standing on standing on the mountain that Nipsey Hussle isn't a legend because he wasn't putting up as big of numbers as some of these artists that he considers to be legends. He's equating legend status within, you know, the rap community or at least that music world to album sales following um what financial monetary impact did you make whereas ti has been arguing that nipsey is a legend because of what he represented and what he has come to represent to people since you know his untimely passing since he was gunned down that is what the beef has stemmed over is nipsey a legend because of what he means to people now and because of their, their role that he's come to hold or is he not a legend because he hasn't done legendary numbers like the Jay-Z's, like the Kanye's, like the Drake's, or like the people who we are considering to be legend stars because of what role they hold in the world and because of the mass amounts of units and numbers that they push. That's what Wack is arguing. That is where the beef has stemmed from. Now, since T.I. has made his claims back against Wack 100, pretty much, actually, let me, let me find this clip real quick. T.I. posted on Instagram like a statement or a definition or something of, him pretty much defining what he thinks a legend is and why he's standing by it. But, so here it is. So T.I. in the most T.I. way posted the definition of what a legend is on Instagram. And I'll read it for you. A legend, a traditional story sometimes popularly regarded as historical but unauthenticated. Or the second definition is an extremely famous or notorious person, especially in a particular field. With the caption of... This shit say Nipsey all over it. Record sales and number one hits ain't the only barometer for legendary status. Impact is what is important. Although his notoriety did grow exponentially after his demise, his impact is undeniable. Had to be said. Um, and I have to say, I agree with T.I. on this one. I don't, think, I don't think we can equate something like legendary status to album sales, right? Like There are artists out there that sell a lot of records that I don't think get regarded as 
as legendary status as some of the artists we may never consider, like, who may never sell that much, you know, like, um, let's look at artists like, let me think, I would say someone like, even if we take it back to, like, a Tupac, right, Tupac wasn't necessarily the most the most uh the highest selling album of that time he wasn't uh he still like his albums still sell really well but there are artists out there who outsell tupac by millions of albums or millions of album sales millions of record sales but we're never going to consider those artists to be legendary status you know there are artists right now who are hot today uh, just because of all the things that can make them move or hotter today because of all the things that can make them move then artists like tupac and them could have gotten in their times but we don't consider these acts to be legendary status. So I agree with T.I. on this, but the beef has escalated because WAC 100 pretty much started calling T.I. the new 6 9 or the original 6 9 That's what he alluded to. He started posting clips of this Crown Stopper video that T.I. did like years ago. I think maybe like 10, 12 years ago when um, it's pretty much a part of his sentence that he had to do because of what happened to his friend. His friend was gunned down during an incident here in Atlanta. And T.I. was involved with it. Probation stuff happened. Because of it, he had to make this Crime Stoppers video for the local news out here in Atlanta. Wack is using that to try to say that T.I. was an original snitch, telling on his friend, putting information out there. T.I. fans are arguing, right? Like, we're saying, like, no, bro, like, describing what happened to the murder of your friend is not considered snitching. That's, that's, it's not close to the same thing. And T.I., once again, man, like I said, T.I. T.I. responding in the most T.I. way he possibly can, man. He, he ended it, or at least he's been the last one to post, with a post on Instagram. Uh, it's like a meme, right? It says, like, people on Twitter versus people in real life. It's like this dude looking at his phone, and it's like, at famous guy, shut up, your music sucks, talentless idiot. And then it shows, like, another scene with the same guy with the phone in his hand running up to the artist, the famous guy, going, like, oh, my God, could you please sign my hoodie? I'm your biggest fan. Uh, with the caption until it's in my face it's fake this social media shit get weird as fuck however my paperwork clean and presentable for any and all to pull up and see in real life so ain't no back and forth hashtag you too way old, you way too old for this sir and hashtag um way too rich um so who side are you following on man you agree with what do you not feel like nipsey hustle is a legend do you agree with ti do you feel like legendary status does not fall on the album sold but it falls on impact and how people feel about that person that's what I'm leaning towards, but curious to hear what you got to think about that. Drop that in the comment section below for me. So that's all I got for you guys today as far as news. But music, man, a lot of music is dropping today, man. So we got Roddy Rich is dropping his debut album, LP. I don't know what he's considering. I'm going to say album. His debut album, please excuse me for being antisocial, man. Roddy Rich has probably been one of the hottest new artists to be popping off in the last year, year and a half, man. Like... If you have not checked out a Roddy Rich song, I recommend that you do. I like his music. I'm personally a fan, so I've been waiting for this. Um, just I haven't heard a bad song from Roddy Rich yet. Uh, X X is dropping his final album, XXX Tentacion. He is dropping Bad Vibes Forever. This is slated to be the last XXX Tentacion album that we'll ever get. Um, the last one that the estate is pretty much going to drop. Yeah, I was, I was looking at the track list. So many features on that, man. I know, like, um, uh, he has, like, old friends on there like joey badass who i saw uh like sauce walkers on there like it's a really tight uh not tight knit really big track listing of features that he has on there i'm going to check it out i've been vocal on here before about how i haven't been the biggest fan of the x uh posthumous releases just because they haven't really held up to the music that we were hearing before right which is completely understandable because more than likely those songs were unfinished projects or unfin unfinished products that he probably wanted to go back and add touches to and we know how different the music can be when it's the artist is the one engineering it putting their spin on it versus when it's kind of left to a group of people to try to interpret what the artist was trying to do with it and figure it out for there i don't think it always hits the same i don't think some of those posthumous releases haven't really like hit the same but i'm an x fan so i'm going to be checking out for it um probably gonna talk about it on the next episode for real so like definitely let me know what you think about it it's out today so go and check it out um and hit me back what you think on it other than that man we got who else is dropping something french montana is dropping his album montana max b is putting out his his album house money i'm actually gonna check out that max b album i've never listened to a whole max b project i'm gonna check it out um fat joe is dropping his family ties and then Blueface is dropping his project <laughs> find the beat which is a dope name for a blue face project like i i love that name personally like i'm like man that's another good example of like an artist just taking a hold of a joke that the internet has made and making it their thing um but that's all the music i got for you today that's all the music that is out right now i'm checking for most of that 
Let me know if there are other things that you're looking out for in the comment section below. Let me know about your music, man. I'm always trying to be put on, see what you guys are listening to so I can kind of stack up my music uh, library. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, like I said, come and follow me on Instagram at Cody Savior. I want to hear what you guys got to think about some of this music. And if you like this video today, if you got something out of it, please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button if you already haven't. And if you have, appreciate you, and I will see you next week. Peace. <laughs>